Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope this video finds you doing very well wherever you are in the world. I was very fortunate the other day to have received a direct message comment, a private message from a friend and acquaintance and someone who is very generous with his time in that he watches these, some of these YouTube videos that I'm very fortunate to be able to upload to this channel. And he mentioned to me a particular film that I have always been very uh, taken by and I've always been very fond of, but I have never had the chance to speak about it in any great detail. Um, actually, I haven't been able to speak about it at all in the course of this particular YouTube channel project. So, uh, but I do love the film very much. Uh, I've seen the film countless times. I've read the novel upon which the film is based a number of times as well. I'm a great fan of the novel, in fact. I'm really enamored by it. I find it to be a really well put together, well written work that is quite clever in many places. With that in mind, though, I th consider the film adaptation of this particular novel. And there has been, as far as I can uh, recall, only one film adaptation as of now. I find that particular film adaptation to be utterly sublime and, dare I say it, uh, it might even eclipse the original source novel in many ways, many key, key ways. There are some changes that have been made with respect to the original source material versus how to translate some of the passages to the screen. And some of the choices that have been made by the filmmakers in question are nothing short of genius. They are genius in the sense that they are really transmit uh, so well what might be seen to be the general impetus or philosophy that is at play in the source novel. And yet the film uses different sorts of grammar, of storytelling, uh, or different changes, uh, and uh, there are so many key changes to many important scenes that the film becomes quite a, a, a remarkable thing, its own living, breathing entity, independent from the original source novel, although I am also there to acknowledge that there are many similarities that keep both novel and film uh, healthily afloat in terms of believability and accessibility and also in terms of uh, allowing the viewer to become fully immersed in the story that's being presented here. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about this film, which is uh, a film that is a merchant and ivory film. Um, and the, the work is the remains of the day, the remains of the day. Now I have this on a Blu-ray, which is a Japanese Blu-ray. It's not that well packed with a lot of special features or the like, but it is the film. And the, the work is a Merchant and Ivory film. Uh, and it is uh, James Ivory directing um, Ismail Merchant and uh, producing, and also we have um, uh, Ruth Prolajabala as well in terms of the, the writing of the script, uh, adapted from the novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, starring Anthony Hopkins and um, uh, Emma Thompson. Now, if you will recall, this film was uh, sort of hot off the heels of 
another Merchant Ivory classic, also starring Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson in two brilliantly played roles. The film, of course, was Howard's End. Howard's End is a, uh, a, a fantastic, fantastic work. And the novel by Ian e. Forster is one of my favorites. In fact, it's, it's one that I visit regularly um, in terms of novels that I like to reread. Uh, and it's one of the novels that I think I've re- reread most in my life. I think I reread it at least once a year. Uh, it's, it's so... Uh, it's so good and uh, it's really interesting because it's not necessarily a novel that I would say is is immediately close to me in terms of the setting and the and the uh, the cast of characters and the like but there's something quite uh, quite moving about the 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 gravity of the shifts that occur within the context of that story and how well that's translated further into the Merchant and Ivory film played with such grace and such dexterity and also with such uh, 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 viciousness and also with a, a an appropriate level of coldness that in turn becomes uh, sort of it transcends into something quite poetic and so this is at the heart I think of what Merchant Ivory does uh, so well especially during this period of their of their output, you know, the late 80s, or the I should say the, the 80s and 90s, uh, which in many respects can be seen as being a, a kind of golden age of Merchant Ivory films in the terms of the cross-section of critical, uh, critical reception and also um, mass market appeal, as it were. And uh, I think that's the, where we get uh, the films that have gotten a lot of uh, attention in terms of Academy Awards and, and all that. Uh, but uh, I think that is due to the fact that these are absolutely sublime works and I have here Remains of the Day if you haven't seen the film uh, please do so and I was pleasantly reminded of this film by a as I said by a friend and viewer who contacted me directly about having seen this film and I was really taken by this because I I admit I haven't really spoken about it because it hasn't really been in the forefront of my mind just for whatever reason but uh, ever since I received this comment it has uh, slowly regained a position in the forefront of my mind and I recall it now with great fondness now I should say that I loved Howard's End when it was first released in in an uh, in movie theaters. I actually saw Howard's End in the movie theater when I was quite young. I was still a teenager when I saw Howard's End, I think, and it was uh, quite remarkable. I think I was really uh, very uh, interested at the time in Anthony Hopkins and his work because he had just played Hannibal Lecter in a film called The Silence of the Lambs. And I think his next major film role was indeed um, in uh, Howard's End. And then uh, followed closely, it was his performance as Stevens in the the Butler Stevens in this film Remains of the Day. Uh, So there is a closeness in terms of the filmography of Anthony Hopkins, his acting filmography anyway. But uh, that was uh, just a kind of way for me to get into the stuff. It was an entry point for me. But once I got in, uh, there was no way for me to escape. And I I didn't even want to escape. I would love to have stayed in the world of Merchant and Ivory for for, forever, in the sense that there is a a real, there is a a real beauty uh, that's going on. But it's not beauty for beauty's sake. There is a, a, a kind of, of, uh, beauty that is perhaps deceptive, but also it's true to life. There is also a a playfulness in terms of a, a kind of, uh, well, in, especially with how uh, with remains of the day. Excuse me. There is a kind of playfulness in terms of temporal shifts, uh, the way the past and present tend to collide and intertwine. Uh, as some of you may know, this film is essentially. Uh, the the elder Butler Stevens looking back kind of on his past and what happened and certain events that happened in his past 
that uh, were during some key moments in the interwar years, so to speak. This is the period between the end of the First World War and then the start of the Second World War. Now, you had very key uh, historical events uh, that could be seen to be leading up directly to the uh, to the start of the Second World War in the European theater. Uh, well, this film and the story tends to intertwine those events in a very distant way, granted, but they are still present, and that is the historical context and setting against which the intimate story is being presented. And that intimate story is essentially a story focusing in on this particular butler called Stevens and uh, his his uh, trying to deal with certain aspects of the house that is under his keep, and in which is the presence of uh, you know, a personage named Miss Kenton played with uh, such uh, warmth and wittiness by the great, great, great Emma Thompson. And there is a kind of uh, personal tension that uh, quietly erupts. And it goes in many different ways and it goes spans over a number of years. And we see this relationship and how these intimate relationships tend to intertwine with the backdrop of these more grander, broader, quote-unquote bigger, historical, uh, historically based uh, uh, events that lead to uh, things that can shock, uh, that can lead to shocks to the system. And I, I mean shocks to the system uh, both historically and, and uh, on a grand social scale, as we have seen with the Second World War, but also on an intimate and very uh, on a very micro scale, and that means in terms of the relationships that are fostered or that are not fostered uh, with with respect to the characters in question. So uh, uh, this was a film that I saw many many times. I had the great pleasure and fortune, good fortune, to have been able to see the film in the theater when it was first released. Because I was, as I say, I was a big fan of of Merchant Ivory, having just watched Howard's End, and now this was the film that was released in Kazuo Ishiguro. Uh, I had never necessarily read anything by Kazuo Ishiguro, but this also inspired me to read The Remains of the Day, and I was so taken by... Uh, Ishiro's writing style and then his background as well uh, and I admit it, it was uh, a kind of uh, biographical background that uh, wasn't uh, something that uh, I felt uh, just in very basic basic terms I, I, some, I felt a kind of kinship as it were uh, with his particular biography uh, but uh, in terms of his writing, his writing, I think, is, is quite uh, world-class. And uh, in particular, uh, Reigns of the Day, there's a quite a nice sharpness to his, his work. Uh, but that being said, as I alluded to earlier, I do believe that the film, the uh, Merchant Ivory film uh, with the script by Ruth Prowler Jabwala, is something that I would say eclipses the, the already masterful uh, work by Ishiguro. And I say that because I think that there is a, a at, at its heart, there is a great sense of economy and there is a great sense of condensing certain moments in, of the novel that one might seem, one might see as being, while very interesting and effective in a certain, uh, a certain way, I think without those touches, I think there is a certain streamlined effect to this particular work that makes it sharper and more in focus. And it makes, it leaves more ambiguity and leaves things more up to the mind of the, of the viewer in a very interesting way. Uh, there are some moments where I would say that the novel tends to show more than the film, if you can believe that. And I think while showing more is, I think, a very good thing, 
to a certain degree. I think ultimately, with respect to the characters here, I think there is something quite poetic about not showing as much as the novel is willing to show. So I, I think there is a, a, a something to that. Now, some of you might, uh, again, I'm trying to be as vague as possible here, but um, I cannot contain my excitement uh, and my love of this film. And I think it's one of those, uh, those truly magnificent, beautiful, and uh, just, uh, it's, it kind of uh, is like a, it's sort of a you know that type of film that sort of hollows out one's soul uh, upon watching it, so that when you've finished the film, sort of left spent of energy, and uh, those are the to types of films that I think are just truly worth watching over and over again. They're like uh, treasure chests filled with so many uh, wonders and. Uh, beauties and charms and also delights and also uh, some difficult things as well but those difficult things are just as important right because they remind us of of the uh, certain hardships but uh, they are oh so human and so oh so relatable and and thus oh so tragic and they stick with you and they linger and they remain behind um, uh, so that is for me uh, a mark of a, a film that is worth watching many times and the remains of the day is certainly one of those films that is worth watching now i know that there have been a number of releases of this film uh in in north america and so if you can get a good release of this i would strongly suggest that you can um, now, I don't know what the plans are for this particular release. As I said, I don't work for any kind of label or I don't have any inside information of that sort, so I can't say with any precision as to what is good or what is uh, going to happen. But I can dare say that um, this film is still readily available. And, uh, you know, I, I, I keep saying this. Excuse me. I keep saying this in terms of I want to do this on this channel and I want to do that on this channel. And I think I, I tend to, to be a little bit overly ambitious because I can't necessarily deliver on things that I always say that I want to do because of time and, and schedule, of course. But it would be such a great honor for me if I would able, were able one day to talk about some of the works of the Merchant Ivory team. And if that were indeed possible, it would be such an honor for me to talk about some of the, the it can be some of the earlier works as well, but uh, also some of the, the more quote-unquote uh, later works, included which um, films like Room of the View or uh, uh, Howard's End or, or uh, you know, Remains of the Day would be uh, such a, an honor for me. So uh, I will try to keep my options as open as possible with respect to that. But in the meantime, my friends, if you're able to catch this film uh, in any uh, form, then and if you haven't seen the film yet, then I would strongly, strongly suggest getting this film, or at least watching it and uh, just enjoying it for what it has to offer. And believe me, it has so much to offer. Okay, my friends, that's it for this particular video. So thank you very much for sticking around. I'm, I'm uh, uh, very happy to see old friends and new friends uh, here at, at this channel. It always makes me very happy and filled with a lot of energy. So thank you once again, my dear friends, for always being great examples for me of uh, wonderful, energetic, and friendly, and warm film enthusiasts uh, who have uh, boundless levels of energy and always show me uh, and always give me um, wonderful um, reasons to uh, keep wanting to continue doing this uh, YouTube thing. So thank you very much, my dear friends, and I hope you are doing very, very well. And until we meet again, Please be happy and healthy, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies. Till we meet again, my friends. Cheers. Mm -hmm.